want a reminder that you have to keep your face mask on at all times. If you happen to have a cell phone, please make sure it's turned off before it starts to uh, vibrate. If you're able, would you please stand? I am resurrection and I am life, says the Lord. Whoever has faith in me shall have life, even though she die. And everyone who has life and is committed to me in faith shall not die forever. Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And when I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, that where I am you may be also. I am sure that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all of creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. The first thing that I promised Janet that I would do, Hello, lovey! <laughs> <laughs> My name is Keith Nethery. For a long time, I was rector of St. Stephen's Memorial Anglican Church, now Holy Trinity St. Stephen's Memorial. There are a few familiar faces from there here today. Uh, that's where I got to know Janet. And we had a wonderful relationship. She asked me several times if I would do this for her funeral, and it is my honor and privilege to be here today. Now we'll hear from the one that I think Janet adored the most, mm -hmm. your son Kevin. Theater. I thank you all for coming today. And I remember back in the 60s, I saw this on Facebook and I just had to reflect on it and change it a little. I'm just changing it a little, though. That um, all children in the 60s were brought up with a silver spoon in their mouth. Well, mom made sure I was rose correctly and she made sure that I was risen with a wooden spoon at another place on my anatomy. <laughs> so, but um, where do I sum up the life of someone that I've spent the last 55 years with? Yes, 55 years with Janet. That poor woman, 55 years along with me. My mother Janet was known by many names. Janet sister, auntie, mother, wife, and the chocolate lady for the chocolates that she made for the kids at Halloween and at the church. And of course, lovey by all of her church friends and Reverend Keith, who is with us today. Mom was a caring woman as a child. She told me she wanted to become a nurse or a teacher growing up, as she used to love children so deeply. She was so proud of her niece, Diane, when she took up teaching. She, would, she often told me that as a child, she would dress as a nurse or a nanny to walk her dollies and the kids would always see the nurse and run across the street only to yell, oh, it's only Janet again. No need to cross the road. She cared for and loved her younger brother, Bill, by a year, but always would say, my big brother. 
This was a term of endearment for someone who was so close and her protector, as she told me. Once when he was sick, Mom felt the pain of it and they strung up a toy plane, I believe it was, or a ball that Mom would hit back and forth to Bill, to my uncle, in his room so that they could play together. She was so proud also of her nephew Stephen and so proud when he started Mouse in the House, now Mouse Renovations Company. Steve, that'll be $10 for the commercial. Okay. Uh, his children, Matthew and Stephanie. Uh, Matt, who is with us today, Stephanie, who is working her new job. Got jobs and good education. And they also made her very proud and happy. Lastly, there was her dear sister-in-law, Sonia, predeceased, who she loved and who wound out our happy family. We all miss her so much. Mom was also married to my father, William, and divorced when I was in my teens. Mom kept the family together only for me and to have both parents at home at the time. She loved and adored her parents, Elizabeth, and yes, you guessed it right, another William in the family. But she loved them both deeply, and she is with them now. Then came me. Ah, yes, the bad joker of the lot, and not the best of students, having some troubles as a youth. But no matter what, though, she loved me and was my angel and my guiding light. When I was four, she helped me out at nursery school in Montreal. And there was a race at a picnic that I refused to run in. You are so stubborn, you're just like your father. But then she walked me home so that we could sit there and watch TV with ice cream together. Uh, she fought to keep my school open across the street when we moved to Crawford Park in Verdun, Montreal. When we moved here in grade eight of my life, she also would fight for the LTC and petition against service and funding cuts. Yesterday, remembered dearly by one of her favorite bus drivers, uh, Jimmy Fitzgerald, who came to visitation to visit with her. He used to affectionately call mom, Mama. Uh, she was loved by dear neighbors, Jim and Naomi, Jeannie and Sue and Bella. She was also loved by Jeannie's dear little dog, Tucker, who would uh, always come up our driveway to stay with us because he didn't want to be alone at home while mommy was at work. So in high school, mom started to see problems in me with temper, anxiety, etc. and fought them for help and finally won. Once she argued so strongly with Tom Gosnell on the phone on one occasion that our dear beloved Mayor Gosnell, the power of the people, hung up the phone on her. I later found out from a family friend that knew him so well 
that she was costing the taxpayers so much money just to talk to him that that's all Tom could do. Um, Dad, my father, who she had divorced, remarried later in life. And Mom had a great relationship with my dear stepmother, Judy Campo. Pollock and her dog, Bonnie, who I love so much. Mom always joked with Judy about forming a club. This club was to be named the SOMTBP. Yes, you guessed it, survivors of marriage to Bill Pollock. I finally made her so proud when I went to Fanshawe in my late 30s and 40s, where I earned not one, but two diplomas. These were in general education and in law clerking, both of which I spent the money on and have still not seen any results from. <laughs> uh, in my 20s, we crossed the country, the two of us, by train on the Canadian of the Rail. Only to have her surprise me at the end of the trip in Vancouver with a ride on the Royal Hudson steam train. Again, her love shone through, letting a young friend of mine by the name of Shane, my roommate, rent a room in her house. She was so happy when she saw Shane at the nursing home and the young man that he had become. The government had to fight me to put her in a home in the end. No one was taking my duty as son away from me. But I was then forced to give up when she was getting worse dementia I was in danger of falling down the stairs at the house. Thank God that the Lord above found Elmwood Place for her. I cannot speak highly enough of the care that they all gave to her. Their staff like family. They actually came in yesterday on a visitation and said, Kevin, we found your mother's dentures. What do you want me to do with them? And I said, well, I said, they're no good. I said, just, you know, throw them out. And they said, well, this is in your honor and your mother's honor. How about if we do something very Janet-like? They wanted to make up the, the copy of the last bill that the boss, Lisa, had sent to me wrap them around her dentures and write, bite me Lisa, love Janet on them. <laughs> the dementia worsened and by this Halloween, pneumonia fought for her, but mum bounced back. But by that weekend, 12 hours later, it set in again for the fourth time. Mum was not eating and gasping for every breath. And that devil pneumonia then took her life and she died in my arms November 3rd at 10.57 a.m. When I arrived home, I looked out the window across the roof and next door, and I asked, Mom, did you make it home to Grandma okay? Are you safe? Right then, at that moment, a little black squirrel popped its head over the roof awning, looked directly in my eyes, flicked its tail at me, and I knew it was her and that she had made it home okay and was safe. I told her that night in prayer, see mom, I told you to stop water gunning those 
squirrels from the path in the garden. Yes, folks, God had got his revenge and got mom back as her most hated of hated of rodents, a squirrel. <clears throat> Today we have with us many members that mom knew and that I knew from high school. Her family here in the front row, Bill, her brother, Fidel, Diane, her niece, Stephen, her nephew, and Erica, her new girlfriend, and Matt, her younger nephew. I have family friends here who were the family at St. Stephen's, both Chuck, Dave, Al, Peter, and Genevieve, my high school buddies, both Tracy and Sue Borman and Anthony Bensley, and good family friends who are Shane's parents, both Connie and Rick Mead, and their young, uh, young grandson, Jaden, who has come to be a pole bearer for me in honor of Mum, who he knew for most of his life. So I thank you all for coming today. God bless you all for this and making it so easy on me and the family. And all your love that you shared for Mom over the years. I now turn you back over to the Reverend Canon Keith Nethery for the rest of the service. Thank you. The comforting words of the 23rd Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in want. He makes me lie down in green pastures and leads me beside still waters. He revives my soul and guides me along right pathways for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You spread a table before me in the presence of those who trouble me. You have anointed my head with oil, and my cup is running over. Surely your goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Let us pray. God of all consolation, in your unending love and mercy, you turn the darkness of death into the dawn of new light. Show compassion to your people in their sorrow, be our refuge and our strength, to lift us from the darkness of grief to the peace and light of your presence. Your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by dying for us conquered death, and by rising again restored life. May we then go forward eagerly to meet him, and after our life on earth be reunited with our brothers and sisters, where every tear will be wiped away. We ask this through Jesus Christ the Lord. Amen. A reading from the first letter of Peter. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By his great mercy he has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who are being protected by the power of God through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice, even if now for a little while you had to suffer various trials, so that the genuineness of your faith being more precious than gold, though perishable, is tested by fire may be found to result in praise and glory and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Although you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and rejoice with an indescribable and glorious joy. For you are receiving the outcome of your faith, 
the salvation of your souls. Here ends the reading. I don't know what heaven looks like, tastes like, smells like, or feels like. I just know it's there. And I also know that Janet is there. Our lovey is greeting everyone, and you know that she would. That's just who she is. She was a woman of deep faith. I learned that. She trusted in God. She wanted for others, but never for herself. She argued with me many times, wanting something for the kids, or something for the nursery, or something for this part of the church, or another part of the church. Never once asked me for anything for herself. She asked me several times to help along with Kevin. Never once did she ask me to help Jim. We used to sit and chat. She taught me a new term, thing me. You know, thing me, that thing me person over there. <coughs> Always will remember that. She was a woman of great passion. And she got her mind on something, it was hard to get it off. She just went straight ahead, 100%, full bore. I appreciated that. I've always said, and I think Peter Wickerson, who's here, another one of her former rectors, might agree with me on this. When it comes to church, I like to know where I stand. And with Lovey, I always knew where I stood. Sometimes it was outside the door, <laughs> but I always knew where I stood. She wore her heart on her sleeve. So as we gather today, it is to remember Janet, but also to think about what we believe. I chose this reading from Peter specifically, because it asks us to trust God deeply, to trust that what we have to work our way through in life will not overcome. that our reward is kept for us in heaven by God until that time. And that time came just over a week ago. And that little squirrel ran across the yard and then around the corner and straight up to heaven. She's not gone. She's still here. Close your eyes. You can see her. Listen. You can hear her voice. Remember the story she told. Remember the love she shared. That's what goes on in this life. But think also about the next life and what it means to how you live your life today. Now, as I said, sometimes Janet and I didn't see eye to eye. And I told a story in a homily one day, and she kind of came up and wagged her finger at me, and said, I can't argue with that one. See, Janet didn't like it when I changed things. And if I did change them, she certainly didn't want me to change them again. Keep it all the same all the time. So I told her a story, and I've, I've used this several times, about a young pastor who got up in front of a church one Sunday morning and said, Now, I know that you are going to not like this, because we're going to do something different. I have a new song. I think you'll like it. And already the pastor could see the people, they were all grumbling and they were unhappy. And Janet was leading the charge, I'm quite sure. You can't do something new. Well, it was a couple hundred years ago. And that song was Jesus Loves Me. 
told me that song would mean different things after thinking about it. Can you imagine if we had shot that down? We all know the song. We all treasure it from when we were little. Lovey knows it's true. Mark's going to play a little bit for us right now. Just so nobody goes out and quotes me on the origin of Jesus loved me, I made that story up. It wasn't a true story, it was just designed to introduce change. It still works. Let us pray. God of grace and glory, we thank you for Lovey who was so near and dear to us and who has now been taken from us. We thank you for the friendship she gave and for the strength and the peace that she brought in her own way. We thank you for the love that Janet offered and received while she was with us here on earth. We pray that nothing good in her life will be lost, but will be of benefit to the world, that all that was important to Janet will be respected by those who follow, and that everything in which Lovey was great will continue to mean much to us now that she is gone. We ask you that she may go on living in her family and her friends, in their hearts and minds, in their courage and in their consciences. And we ask that those who were close to her may now, because of her death, be even closer to each other. And that we may, in peace and friendship here on earth, always be deeply conscious of your promise to be faithful to us in death. May God grant us courage and confidence in the new life of Christ. We ask this in the name of the risen Lord. Amen. I invite you to join with me in the words of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Give rest, O Christ, to your servant with your saints, where sorrow and pain are no more. Neither sign, but life everlasting. You only are immortal, the creator and maker of all. We are mortal, formed of the earth, and to earth shall we return. For so did you ordain when you created me, saying, You are dust, and to dust you shall return. All of us go down to the dust. Yet even at the grave we make our song, Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Into your hands, O merciful Savior, we commend your servant Janet. Acknowledge, we pray, a sheep of your own fold, the lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming. Receive her into the arms of your mercy, 
and into the blessed rest of everlasting peace, and into the glorious company of the saints in light. Amen. It has been an honor and a privilege to do this for Janet. She asked me many times. As the dementia started, she asked me many more times. That was fine. I always told her, yes, lovey, as long as I can, I will. A special lady. I will miss her. The peace of God, which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you, those that you love, and those that love you, this day and forevermore. Amen.